My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons of investing into individual dividend stocks versus dividend ETFs. And this really from a perspective of a do-it-yourself investor. What I've noticed, if you do a Google search or you look at different articles on what are the pros of ETFs, what are the pros of individual stocks, it doesn't really help you as a dividend investor. At least that's been the experience for me. When I've been researching and watching different videos, reading different uh, you know articles, articles and blog posts on this topic, it's been, what I've noticed for me is it's been a little bit generic. And I want to go into detail, really in depth of why I invest in one or the other or both. This video is not going to be generic. It's not going to be just very, very high level. I'm going to go into detail and share with new investors or beginner investors that are really asking themselves this question. Maybe you're setting up your portfolio for the first time or you're reevaluating your portfolio if, to make sure that you're on the right track. This, the information that I'm going to provide here are all things that I've, I've had on my mind for years. And I'm gonna share with all of you how I as a do-it-yourself investor, what are the things that I review and consider when investing in one or the other or both. Before we, we dive into today's video, I wanna take about three minutes and I wanna share with everybody a new side project that I've been working on. So if you're just interested in the topic here of the video, skip ahead three minutes. But if you're interested in learning more about a project that I've been working on, stay tuned and uh, I'll introduce right now. Ever since I released this video a couple of weeks ago about how I increased my earned income by 50% every two years, a lot of you have been reaching out via email asking for interview advice, advice in how to get a software sales job as a junior sales rep. My channel has always been about providing value. I put together five services that you can book time with me directly where I feel very confident that I can provide value to you and truly help you out. I've done some, some research online about you know software or sales uh, coaching, sales advice, and I was completely shocked by the prices that these different websites are charging. And I was thinking to myself, I can do this for a fourth of the cost and probably do it a lot better and provide you a lot more tangible feedback, advice, coaching, because this is what I've been doing for, for 10 years. Um, I've started my career in sales. I've always been in sales. I've done over, I've conducted over a thousand software sales candidate interviews. I've onboarded 500 sales reps at some of the largest software companies in the world, like Microsoft, Google, Oracle, also a few, uh, you know, very early post IPO software companies here in North America, as well as in, in Europe. Um, for those of you that are following the channel, I used to, to work in Europe. I, I did my master's in Europe, right? And so this is something where I feel very confident that I can provide value. So I put together five services here, five topics that you can book time directly with me where I really, really feel like I can help you out. If you're really just interested in software sales interview preparation, you can book time with me directly on, on that topic. If you're looking to really role play, like say for example, you you feel prepared, but you just don't really Really know what kind of questions are going to be asked, how to respond to those questions. That's really where, where I, I can provide value to you. If you're looking for really kind of the all-in-one where you want interview preparation, you want sales interview role-playing, this service is actually going to be for an hour and a half. So if you want to have an hour and a half one-on-one -on -one time with me, you can book that and I can walk you through and share with you all that I know about landing a, a sales job as a junior sales rep in tech. Also, if you're interested or you need help with software sales, you know, you're with your resume, you're looking for a job, but you just don't know how to draft your resume. I'm not going to do the resume for you. I'm going to provide feedback on, on, on your resume as well as LinkedIn profile coaching, how you can stand out to sales recruiters. And then lastly, this may apply to more of you, M1 Finance Coaching and Pie Review. I'm not going to give you financial advice. I'm not going to tell you what investments to invest in. I'm going to share why I invest in certain investments that I invest in and kind of talk through with you, right? And see, you know, spend some one-on-one time, one -on -one time with you. I think this will maybe be applicable to more of, more of you that, that follow the channel. And then lastly, all of the meetings are via a private Zoom conference call. So it can be audio only, or if you'd like, we can do it via video. So we can, uh, we can chat, we can, we can talk about anything that you want. This time is really for you. And my goal here is to provide value and to help in any way that I can. So if you're interested in that, you can book some time with me. I know that this isn't going to be applicable to everybody, but if, uh, if it is, I'm really excited to meet you and uh, we'll, we'll talk then. Let's take a look at some of the, the pros of investing in individual stocks. We'll start there. So one of the, the first pros that come to, to mind when investing in individual stocks, when you're 
you're building out your portfolio, right? Whether you're using M1 Finance, Vanguard, or whatever brokerage, whether you're here in the United States or international, the number one thing that comes to mind or the first thing is control. You have control over which investments are in your portfolio. If you're investing into an ETF, this is not necessarily the case because you're buying the index. Yeah, you can specify, okay, I just want consumer goods and you're just going to buy that, that index, but you don't have full control over the allocation that the the individual company or the, you know, the, the company has in that index where you do if you have individual shares of the company in your portfolio. So that's the very first thing. And so with different brokerages, you can set up your portfolio that way. With M1 Finance, what I really like about M1 Finance is you can set up your allocation very seamlessly. Say, for example, if we were to go into my uh, my industrial slice here, I can set up how much exposure I want to have to 3M versus waste management versus UPS versus Honeywell, etc. And I have control over what percentage these individual companies have in my portfolio. So as a do-it-yourself investor, having that control can be very valuable. Another pro to investing in individual stocks is your return potential. If you were just to invest into Kimberly Clark here back in 2010 and reinvested the dividends, you would have, and you invested $10,000, you would have an annual return of almost 13%. Now, if you were to invest into an ETF that follows the consumer staples index, like the Vanguard VDC, you would have a lower return though it's still a great return, but you have more potential with individual stocks to have higher returns. So the potential, it's not a guarantee, like the, the emphasis should be on the potential. Another pro to investing in individual stocks is the emotional aspect of investing in supporting a business. You want to financially support a business that is socially or environmentally responsible. For example, you could invest in certain utility companies that are more, they, their business operations are more skewed towards renewable energy. You could take a, an a, you know, approach to that. You know, if you really, really want to focus on, on investing in companies that are more socially or environmentally responsible, and that's important to you. And that's a way that you could do that with individual stocks. Another benefit of individual stocks is the dividend payout schedule. Now, I don't recommend investing in individual companies just because of their payout schedule, but this is an advantage that individual stocks have over ETFs is your flexibility with the payout schedule. For example, the majority of ETFs are on a schedule on a March, June, September, and December schedule. But for example, if you wanted to, let's go over here to the activity feed here, my M1 finance pie. If you wanted to invest in the, in the companies that were on a July or in an August schedule, you could invest directly into these businesses and get paid spe at specific times that meet your goals and your priorities. Let's talk about some of the cons of investing in individual companies. So the first one that comes to mind is concentrated risk. Not in all cases. I mean, there are some really good companies like Johnson & Johnson, McDonald's that are very, very well diversified. But in most cases, or in a lot of cases, there's concentrated risk when you're investing into an individual company. A company that is focused on one product, one service, one location, one, you know, there, there's not much diversification there. The second con that comes to mind is the worst case scenario when you invest into an individual company is they go bankrupt. Like their stock goes to zero and you lose everything. You know, there's a few examples when we look back at companies that went bankrupt recently. If you were, you know, a JCPenney uh, shareholder, if you were a Kodak holder, a shareholder, if you invested into other retailers as of late, this has been an area where this concentrated risk has not paid out for the long-term investor. And that is that is an absolute risk or a con that comes with investing in individual stocks. Now, when we talk about diversification, yes, there is in most cases less diversification that comes with investing in individual stocks. However, you can counter this with holding multiple holdings in your portfolio. Say, for example, I were just to invest into, let's say, healthcare. 
If I were just to invest into Johnson & Johnson, I would be very concentrated and I would have fewer diversification than I personally would feel comfortable with. Now, one could argue, yeah, Johnson & Johnson is a very well diversified company. They have multiple business units. They have B2B, they have B2C uh, business lines. Like there, there is a lot of diversification with this investment. But if you were just to invest into, for example, a pharmaceutical company, you had all of your, your exposure to healthcare in, for example, Pfizer, or AbbVie, you'd be very limited with your diversification for that sector. Okay. But by having multiple companies in your portfolio, you're able to counter that, that con, I guess you could say, with, with investing in individual stocks. Another con with investing in individual companies is the emotional roller coaster that comes with it. One day your stock is up, the next your stock is down. And always seeing that fluctuation going up and down can be very emotional and it can have a it can have its toll on new investors and i think that that some is something that gets understated uh, here in the finance community is really the impact that emotions play in investing into whether individual stocks or ETFs. So really not underplaying the the impact of the emotional distress that, that comes with investing into individual companies. Another con that comes with investing into individual stocks is that false sense of control. That being, you know, you're doing your fundamental and your te technical analysis before you invest into a company and you know, looking at General Electric, for example, up until the financial crisis of 08 and 09, General Electric was always up and to the right. They were they were beating and raising every single year. Business was great. But with, with the financial crisis of 08 and 09, General Electric just fell off a cliff is what it looked like. And so having that false sense of control, when you're looking at the fundamentals, everything looks great in 2007, 2006, and then all of a sudden the financial crisis hits, then you're you're taken through this, this roller coaster. And I think that is a big risk that comes with investing in individual companies is relying on the fundamentals and thinking that you know better and having that false sense of control Whereas in reality, we, we maybe necessarily can't control the, uh, the outcome of, of bad management at an organization, right? Not every organization is run properly uh, for management. There's different priorities. You know, you look at the example of what's been going on with Wells Fargo, with the, uh, the scandal that they, they've had. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's been kind of a, a roller coaster if you're, you've been a, uh, a shareholder of Wells Fargo. No, I'm not hating on, on Wells Fargo or shareholders that hold Wells Fargo. I'm just merely saying that, you know, this is an example of, you know, that, that maybe that false sense of, of control that comes with investing into individual stocks. Another con that comes with investing in individual companies is the time that it takes to follow up on investments. Now, if you really want to make sure that you're making the right decision, you're following up on these companies, you're following up on their balance sheet, you're, you're reviewing them, you're staying up to date, this becomes a little bit more active and less passive. And therefore it is a con in my perspective of investing in individual companies because it does require you, if you want to do it right, to follow up on these businesses. Let's take a look at some of the pros of investing into dividend ETFs. Now, the first thing that comes to mind, I think this is what everyone can wrap their head around, is diversification. You're getting a basket of companies with this single investment and you're, you're, you're spreading out your risk and you're increasing your exposure to multiple industries, multiple product lines, multiple services, multiple locations, et cetera. You're, you're spreading that diversification out and you're, you're protecting yourself against uh, over-concentration. For me, that is an absolute pro to uh, investing into dividend ETFs. The second thing is you don't have to be a financial guru or an expert to get great returns. If you invest into an index or a, you know, just the S&P 500, you don't have to be an expert, right? You can invest with confidence and you don't have to feel like you have to know everything to get great returns. Another pro to investing into dividend ETFs is, in my opinion, this is the most true passive approach to cash flow, to passive income. Dividend ETFs are the most purest form of 
dividend cash flow and passive income. That's my opinion. I, I believe that this is really a way for new investors to get exposure to the stock market, start generating passive income through dividends from dividend growth ETFs. Another pro to dividend ETFs is that sleep well at night factor. This really cannot be underestimated. For all of you that were in the stock market back in March and April, you might have seen this roller coaster. You, you might have felt a little bit overwhelmed. You know, if you're a brand new investor, you might have been, you know, losing some sleep at night thinking you were going to lose everything. With ETFs, you really can feel comfortable and sleep well at night that when you see the portfolio go down, you can really average in, you can dollar cost average and average in with confidence into ETFs. And this has been my personal experience, right? I've invested into companies in the past when I first started investing that went bankrupt. And so investing into ETFs, I feel very, very comfortable averaging down and doubling down knowing that my investments are in almost every case not going to go to zero. And that is a big advantage of investing into dividend ETFs that is not really talked a lot about. Another pro to dividend ETFs, and probably my favorite, is that indexes ETFs are self-cleansing. And so what does that mean, self-cleansing? It means a lot of these ETFs, they're following an index, or they have a set benchmark of how they manage these index indexes. And if a company no longer meets a criteria, the criteria of the index or of the ETF, then it is taken out of the ETF and a new company is put in. It is capitalism at its finest, okay? And so for example, all the companies in SCHD, in order to be included into this ETF, the company has to have paid a dividend for at least 10 years. If the company were to stop paying a dividend, this company would be taken out of SCHD and would no longer be included into this ETF. That is what I mean by self-cleansing. And so that's what I mean by it being passive. You as the investor, you don't have to follow up on the companies. You, you don't have to do the research. And so it is incredibly passive. All right, let's take a look at some of the cons of investing into dividend ETFs, right? Let's take a look at SCHD, the high dividend ETF from Schwab. So over here on Seeking Alpha, something that I wanna talk about, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom here, you can see the risk tab. So you can see the number of holdings, the assets in the top 10, right? That's the percentage of the top 10 holdings that make up the overall ETF and the turnover. So I wanna talk about the turnover. One of the cons of investing into dividend ETFs is you have less control over the holdings and the turnover. We talked a little bit earlier about, you know, the criteria for a company to be in an ETF, to be in the index. In some cases, the ETFs will have higher turnover. That means the companies that are in the ETF, that they're shuffling. More are coming in and more are falling out. So the higher percentage of the turnover, that means that this ETF is burning and churning. They're bringing in and they're taking out. They're bringing in and taking out individual companies at a higher rate. So the higher the turnover rate, that means the more fluctuation of the holdings in the ETF. Another con of investing into dividend ETFs is it costs money to own them. In, in this case, for example, the expense ratio is what you as the investor pay to hold to own this ETF. This money is going to the fund manager, to the fund itself to manage these ETFs. Now, this is, you know, the examples that I use on my channel are index funds, they're not mutual funds. And the big difference is, is the difference between actively and passively managed. And all of the, the ETFs in my, you know, the index funds in my account that I own are all index funds. So they're passively owned. So the expense ratio is lower, but that is a con of ETFs is it costs more money to own them versus just owning the individual company outright. Another con of owning dividend ETFs are in the form of tax surprises. So let's say, for example, you, you purchase an ETF and you expect to pay lower taxes at the capital gains rate, but in reality, you're actually taxed at a different rate because in that ETF, there are real estate investment trusts in the ETF and therefore they're taxed 
differently. So there are there can be some tax surprises if you don't know what you're doing. For example, the ETF that I'm showing here, the Schwab SCHD, has zero exposure to real estate. There are no REITs in here. So this ETF is taxed much more favorably than, for example, a an ETF that is concentrated on real estate investment trusts. So something to be very, very aware of. Another con of dividend ETFs is that the performance of the ETF, if it follows an index, for example, a consumer staple or a real estate or a communi communication services index, the performance of the ETF is tied to the index. So if the index is down, the ETF, the performance of the ETF will be down. Another con of investing in the dividend ETFs is really forecasting and predicting future dividend payouts. The dividend payout is a little bit less predictable than if you were to invest into a, a company like Coca-Cola or Pepsi, where it's been more consistent and you can really forecast the dividend amounts that you're going to be getting as a dividend investor compared to, to an ETF. So I wanna share with all of you a couple of reasons of why I invest into individual companies and why I invest into dividend ETFs. The first reason why I invest into dividend ETFs, I've learned from myself, I suck with my emotions. I am so bad with my emotions. And investing in the ETFs, it helps me to control my emotions better. And especially when it comes to my finances and when it comes to my future, when I'm planning, or my, when my wife and I, when we're planning for our, our financial independence journey, emotions can be very, very tense and high. And so this is a way for me to lower my emotions and to focus really on what matters. The second reason is it helps me sleep at night. I didn't lose a night of sleep in March and April when the market was crashing. In some cases, 30, 40, in some cases, 50%. I didn't lose a, a, a second of sleep over, over my portfolio. In fact, I actually was averaging down and, and investing more when the market was going down. Some of the reasons why I like investing in individual companies is I like having a little bit more control. I am a dividend nerd. I do love following up on, on some of the companies that I have in my portfolio. It is a hobby of mine. I love the fact that I have more control. I can invest in wonderful businesses that pay a, a you know, their, their dividend is not just on the traditional pay schedule in March, June, September, and December. I can spread out my dividend payments a little bit more without sacrificing quality in my investments. I hope that this video was helpful. What I've learned at the end of the day, when it comes to deciding whether or not you want to invest in individual dividend stocks or dividend ETFs, you have to understand what are the pros and cons and what's most important to you, you specifically. If you ask other people their opinion of should you do this or should you do that, you're going to get mixed signals, different advice, different opinions. What I've learned is you have to do what's right for you. And understanding both sides and choosing what works for you is what it's all about. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching the video. If you're interested in one of the services that I talked about earlier in the video, I'd be so excited to meet you, speak with you in person, one-on-one. -on -one. And if you like today's video, I'd ask you to give me a thumbs up and I will catch everybody in the next video.